Hi guys, happy holidays. I hope everybody's doing well. I just wanted to create this little disclaimer. This video was shot last year, December of 2021, to be posted around that time. I did not get the chance to post this video. So this video is basically a blast from the past. Some parts of this video was shot this year, most of it last year. I just wanted to make that disclaimer so that you understand why there is a keto icing portion of this video. I'll also instruct you on how to make regular icing of course also this video is in remembrance of my grandmother marion rockley francis who we bonded over the christmas period baking and cooking and doing homely stuff together and so whilst i was raised by both my aunt and my grandmother my grandmother and i bonded over baking and cooking and homely stuff and my aunt over academia self-development and sports and other things like that so i just wanted to give some homage to my grandmother who I very much love and miss. So enjoy the rest of the video. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sadia and this is a series on my channel called Cooking with Sadia here on my channel, Beauty in All Places. Today I'm going to be making the most delicious, scrumptious, delectable vegan cake for a birthday. You can put out for Christmas, Thanksgiving, any kind of holiday. It's just like the best and perfect vanilla cake. I'm going to give you all the substitute and the recipe is going to be great. I added color and pretty to this one because it's the festive season. This is the perfect cake to put out for your guests at Christmas time, Thanksgiving. It is also a great cake for birthdays and celebrative events. So I'm going to give you the basics of how you can make this vanilla cake with vanilla icing and then you can add whatever else you want to it. You can color your icing or not. I just added some color to this because it's the Christmas season and I wanted to add something festive to this. So come along, it's going to be a sweet treat. I can't wait to show you how I make this delicious vegan cake. So come with me and we're going to have a wonderful, sweet and jolly time. Okay, so this is all the ingredients that you're going to need for this cake. We're going to need powdered sugar, plant-based butter. We're gonna need some egg replacer, baking soda, baking powder. I've got vanilla and I've also got imitation vanilla flavor. I've got some vegetable oil, some applesauce, and some unbleached all-purpose flour. As well as I have a baking tin. I think this is a nine inch. And then I have some mixing bowls. And you're also gonna need a few sieves. So let's get into it and let's get baking. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees Celsius. So I've got the oven started and now I'm going to get started on my cake. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to use my biggest mixing bowl, which is this one. Ooh, I forgot one very important and special ingredient, which is sugar. How dare I? We're definitely gonna need sugar. There's no way we're gonna make this cake to make it taste good without sugar. So I apologize. Here's the sugar, we're gonna need sugar. This is just organic raw cane sugar. I also have something just a little bit more refined. Some additional sugar here, just in case those grains are way too big. And we're gonna need a few tools. I'm gonna grab my mixer and then we're gonna get right into it. So if you have a mixer, that is going to be ideal and make your life a lot easier. My partner actually bought me this for my birthday because he knows I'm a kitchen gal and I like to be in the kitchen because I like to eat and I like to bake and I like to make delicious things. So he got me this for my birthday after I told him, of course. <laughs> Okay, so if you guys have a mixer, that's going to make your life a whole lot easier because it's going to be a lot of mixing and trying to knead everything out to like, you know, make the batter smooth or a cake. So the first thing we're gonna start off with is butter. Of course, you can't bake without butter. I don't know any cake that's made without butter. I mean, I don't know, maybe they are. I'm yet to see it. So in this recipe, which I am eyeballing, but use my recipe because it's going to be good and you will see. I never, almost never use like a recipe recipe. I'm just gonna place this stick of butter into my baking bowl. 
Now I'm just going to eyeball my sugar. Like I said, I almost never measure anything, but I know what I'm looking for. I've been baking ever since I was a little girl with my grandma. She barely ever measure anything and everything always came out just perfect. And I kind of maneuver my way into the kitchen the same way. And so I'm proud of that, that I'm pretty good at just knowing what is needed when it comes to kitchen stuff. This is a 32 ounce pack of sugar, which comes out to two pounds. I'm going to use about a quarter of a pound of sugar in this. And I'm just literally eyeballing it. So this is what we're working with so far. Maybe just a little less than a cup of sugar. Okay, now that we've had our sugar and our butter in here, I'm just gonna take my mixing tool. I'm gonna put that on level one and I'm going to combine these two ingredients. Okay, so currently we are at this stage. This is the consistency of my butter and sugar. It's still a little grainy, but we're going to add some additional ingredients in here to help to break this down and to make it nice and smooth. I'm going to add about this, that much vegetable oil. I'm also gonna add some vanilla extract. I want this to be very vanilla-y. I'm gonna add some addition of this imitation vanilla flavor. I really want that vanilla aroma to come out. And we're gonna go back into mixing this around just a little bit. Just to break up that sugar, break it down a bit. So now we got something like this. I'm gonna use my mixer to break that down a whole lot more. Okay, so currently this is what our wet ingredients look like. This is sugar, butter, vegetable oil, and vanilla. So at this stage, this is where you would add your egg to combine everything. We don't have egg, so we're going to use a egg replacer. I have the egg replacer, it looks like this, comes in a box like this. It's non-GMO, it's really good. It makes everything so moist and so delicious. And I also have applesauce. applesauce is also a good egg replacer. It makes your cakes really moist and very delicious. I normally use one or the other of this, but today I'm going to use both because we want our cake to be extra moist and extra juicy and extra scrumptious. So to the bowl, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this applesauce. So I'm gonna put about that much and I would say that's about four tablespoons full. And we're just gonna put that to the side. Now for the egg replacer. It's pretty simple. All you need to do is just add this to your bowl and then you add some warm water. So I'm gonna add about, about that much. And I know I'm adding way too much, but I do want my cake to be extra moist and extra juicy. And the chemistry of this egg replacer is does make your cake very moist and I want my cake very moist so I'm going to add extra and now I'm going to add some water some hot water or warm water and I'm going to mix it as I add the water I'm just gonna mix that so that it does not clump up kind of dissolve everything I'm just gonna grab this to get the sides So now that we've had our butter, vanilla, oil mix with our applesauce, I'm going to add the egg replacer in here as well. And if there's one thing that I know about baking is that you want to combine all of your wet ingredients first and then you add your dry ingredients. So I'm just gonna mix that a little bit. 
and I'm smelling the aroma of the vanilla, which is what I want. I want this vanilla cake to be excessively vanilla-y, you know, and not like a mild flavor, but a very strong flavor. So I'm just gonna add just a little bit more of this imitation vanilla. So now I'm going to use my mixer to combine this even better. So like I was saying, if there's one thing I know about baking is that you want to combine all of your wet ingredients first and then you add your dry ingredients. So I went into the grocery store the other day to get vanilla because I purchased this for about between six and nine dollars and I went to pick up some vanilla and the vanilla was so expensive. I don't know if it's because of the season, but oh my gosh, a small container of vanilla was like $20. I think it went up to like $28. I was like, this is ridiculous. I guess I'll just grab the imitation vanilla flavor because I'm not buying vanilla for $20, you know? All to say, Around this time of the year, vanilla is very expensive. Too expensive for my good. So I'm literally just combining all of my wet ingredients right now and everything is looking nice and fluffy and is combining very well. Okay guys, so I'm really happy with how this is looking. This is looking very loose. Most of our sugar is blended into here. It's very fluffy. I'm liking the texture. So now I'm going to add my dry ingredients to this. Up close, this is what we have. Nice little batter. Everything seems to be blended seemingly well together. Now I'm going to add some flour to my batter. So I'm gonna take a sip. I'm gonna start off with like a cup of flour, about that much flour, and I'm just gonna sift that in. I'm going to add about this much baking powder, and I'm going to add about that much baking soda. We're just gonna sift that in. Now we're just gonna fold everything over. Now, everything is looking like this because I think I fluffed my butter and oil way too much, so it's looking a little fluffy, but I think it's still good. I'm gonna add some oat milk to that just to loosen that up a little bit. Let us kind of just mix that in. And I'm just gonna taste that to see what that tastes like. Hmm, nice. Not too sweet. Delicious. Okay, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more flour to this and then this will be good to go. About that much flour. Now at this point, I can tell you, I'm a little confused on whether I need to add more flour or not, but I'm going to add just a little bit more because this is looking a lot fluffy and less of the consistency that I am going for. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more flour and I think this is all the flour that I'm going to be adding. So all in all, I think I use about one and a half to two cups of flour. Okay, we're making a mess. And that's a part of the baking process, so. Flour is everywhere, yay. Okay, so I'm loving this consistency. I'm loving where this is going. I love the taste of it. It tastes really good. So I'm just gonna put that in my baking tin and put that in the oven. Okay, so let's just give that a one to mix. Okay, so this is the consistency of our cake. And now we're just gonna place it in our tin. But before we do that, let's just put down a little bit of oil just so that everything doesn't stick. Normally just use my hands very quickly to just spread the oil all around the edges and on the base of the pan, just very quickly and haphazardly. You don't want too much of the oil. You just want a light coating of oil down like that. And then we're going to put our batter onto the baking pan. I think 
thinking this is gonna make a nice one cake. Let's just spread that out. Okay guys, currently this is what our cake is looking like. I'm going to test to see if it's done. I'm just gonna stick a toothpick in the middle just to make sure that it is done. And as you can see, there's nothing coming off of the toothpick, so our cake is done. Okay guys, the reason why I had to put the clip that you're about to see in as a replacement for the actual icing that I made is because I did not film the making of the icing on this day for this particular cake that you are currently watching. So I'm very sorry, I still show you how to make the icing, just bear with me and pay attention. Now I have a bowl, I have some butter, so we're using one stick of plant-based butter. This consistency of butter is the perfect temperature that you want to have to make like a simple icing and icing is basically butter and powdered sugar now I'm not going to use regular powdered sugar even though I do have it in the house because I'm currently on a keto diet or ketogenic diet so I'm going to use a powdered sugar replacement sweetener it is monk fruit with erythritol and it basically just looks like this so instead of using powdered sugar I'm going to use the sugar if you have powdered sugar at home please go ahead and use that it's basically the same technique just a different kind of sweetener so let's go ahead and make this thing you got the scooper so this scooper is about an ounce. I'm going to put an ounce in here. I'm gonna put about three ounces of this scooper. Now, if you are working with powdered sugar, I suggest you use a sieve and sieve a tablespoon, mix, sieve another tablespoon, mix until you get to the consistency that you want. I don't recommend just pouring powdered sugar into your butter mixture because you don't want it to get clumpy. You want to take your time with this. Now, this erythritol and monk fruit mixture is a different story. It kind of, it's very malleable and it really mixes in very quickly and it's extremely sweet if you use a lot. So it's not the same consistency and I'm not going to use it in the same way that I I use powdered sugar so so far I have a consistency like this and you see how fast that was and very easy and very simple I'm just gonna give that a taste Wow Oof. that is really good to be honest I don't need a lot more sugar in this, but because my butter is very evident, one more scoop of this monk fruit. Okay, so now I'm just gonna mix that in. And like I said, this is extremely malleable. Now I have a tip, like if you are making your icing and you find that you've added way too much sugar to it, all you need to do is add some plant-based milk or any kind of milk that you use, preferably plant-based though, but do you boo. <laughs> You do you, okay? No judgments here. And add the milk sparingly, please. Add a tablespoon or a teaspoon at a time and don't pour milk into your icing because remember, you're working with butter and you're working with powdered sugar. They can easily go either way, left or south, and you wanna keep the consistency of your thing like consistent with icing texture. So take your time, build it up. Oftentimes when you're working with powdered sugar, you really have to use a lot and that's what things that I don't like about powdered sugar is that you have to use so much just to get to like a really good icing consistency but it's okay it's fine just take your time with it and continue to use that sieve and sieve the powdered sugar in there mix it taste it see if it's the consistency that you want it to be and then continue on with that. Now I'm at my peak with this monk fruit sweetener I don't think I should add any more even though it's zero calories 
I'm happy with my dessert just being that good. Now I have some food coloring that I may play around with. Okay, so I have here the Wilton food coloring. I think this is okay for me to have as a vegan. I'm going to probably try to play around with the blue. There's four colors in here. There's a green, a red, and a yellow, as well as the blue that I showed you earlier. So we have those to play around with. I would use something like this, like a paddle thing like this. I think this is technically an icing swerver rounder room. <laughs> I don't know what you call it, <laughs> but I think it's specifically made for icing. So let's get this started. So I'm just going to oop, plop it on there and I'm just going to like, you know, kind of play around with it. Just kind of. Now we're just going to try to cover the terrains of the top. You can always like move your thing around like that. Act like you're a professional like cake maker, baker. A homemaker, oh my gosh. Okay, so I have just about that much mixture left. I am gonna play around with some color. I'm going to try this blue one. It looks like that. So you get to like be, be very sparing with it. So I'm just gonna do like one or two drops because I'm looking for like a very light blue color and not something, you know, bright. And then we're just gonna, just gonna mix it in. Ooh, look at that. Oh my gosh. A nice little, a nice little color contrast thingy going on. And so far we're looking like this which is very pretty. I like that. That's exactly the color I was looking for. For me right now, it doesn't have to be mixed out so much that you can't see a streak or two because I think the streaks add beauty to it, you know? So let's try the cake. That's all good. I'm gonna use that to lift the cake. Okay guys, here I am with this delicious, moist, vegan cake. Oh my gosh, look at how beautiful that is. Look at how that just cuts softly in there. How moist is that? Oh my gosh. Mm, so good. I could do without all the a little grains because they do have a slight aftertaste but for the festive seasons why not it's just a little pretty but look how it just mm, it's just so soft so moist mm. just look how that just, just look how that just cuts so easily mm. Mm. that's where it's at so soft, so moist, so delicious. This cake, this vegan cake is everything. Make it for your children's birthday, make it for Christmas, make it for Thanksgiving. It's just, it's just the bomb.com. I would realize you, this is so good. And I've made this cake a lot of times. This is my personal recipe and every time it's just good. Look how off that is I'm just so delicious so good I thought I would add in a little bonus feature in this video as you guys know it gets a little bit chillier where I am in the US in California and one of the things that I've loved since I was a little girl is hot chocolate so I thought I would make my vegan version of my hot chocolate with oat milk dandy's vegan marshmallows and this 
cocoa from Whole Foods. I just love me some hot chocolate all time of year. I like it hot and cold. And I thought I would just, you know, bringing the cutes. Wish you guys a happy and merry and jolly Christmas and, and happy holidays. I wish you a wonderful, fantastic, joy-filled, life full of abundance and money and joy new year. So happy holidays. Bye.